Good morning, students. Today, we will learn the meaning of slack. Now, explaining the meaning of slack with a graph paper is a monotony. So let's try something different. Shall we go for shopping today? Okay, so that's the plan of the day. We should go for shopping. And I'm sure that once the shopping is done, you will understand the meaning of slack. Okay, so you're off to the market with a basket in your hand to buy milk for your mother. Oh, oh, but just look at the basket in your hand. It looks quite small, right? Okay, the basket that you're carrying can just hold two bottles of milk. So that is your first limitation. Your first limitation is the capacity of your basket. And what is the limit? You can buy just two bottles of milk. Now coming to your second limitation. What is your second limitation? The second limitation is the cash that you have with you. You have just 100 rupees with you. So how many bottles of milk can you buy? Each bottle of milk is priced at rupees 20. So how many bottles it is? 100 divided by 20 or you could buy 5 bottles with your 100 rupee note. Now tell me, what is it that you're going to do? You cannot buy five bottles. Why? Because the capacity of your basket is limited to two bottles. So you will be buying just two bottles of milk because of your first limitation. So now you have bought just two bottles of milk. And what is the cash paid? The cash paid is two bottles multiplied by the price of one bottle. What is the price of one bottle? 20 rupees. So it is 20 into 2 or 40 rupees. So what is the unutilized cash? The unutilized cash is 100 minus 40 or it is 60 rupees. Now the unutilized cash or the unutilized resource of 60 rupees is known as the slack. So what is slack? Slack is nothing but the unutilized resources at a particular point. And for business, what is that particular point? It is the optimum production plan. So all that we have to find out is, what is the unutilized resource when the optimum production plan is implemented? So now please note that this is a continuation of the previous class. Those of you who have not watched my previous videos on linear programming are requested to watch the same and then come and attend this class. So coming back to the optimum production plan, let's take a look at what we have found out in the previous class. Now, what was our optimum production plan? Our optimum production plan was point B, where we were producing 625 units of X and 600 units of Y. And how many limiting factors did we have? The number of hours in department A was restricted to 11,000. The number of hours in department B was restricted to 9,000 and the number of hours was restricted to 12,000 in department C. So these are the three limiting factors. Now, when we are implementing the optimum production plan, we will see whether there are any balance hours left in these three departments. If there is balance hours, then there is slack. If there is no balance hours, then there is no slack. So first we will start with department A. In department A, what was the equation 8x plus 10y? And what was this 8x plus 10y? One unit of x takes 8 hours and one unit of y takes 10 hours. So what is 8x plus 10y? It is nothing but the total number of hours that are taken in department A. So how do we find out the number of hours? All that we have to do is substitute the value of x equal to 625 and y is equal to 600 in this equation. So we will get the number of hours taken in department A. So let's substitute. So it is 8 into 625 plus 10 into 600. We get 11,000 hours taken. And how many hours are available in Department A? Department A, the available hours is also 11,000, which means that we do not have even one hour left, which means that no unutilized resource or the slack is zero. Department A is known by the name binding constraint. What do you mean by binding constraint? It is so critical. That is even a slight delay in department A, we will not be able to achieve the optimum production plan of X625 and Y600. Now coming to the next department, department B. In department B, what is the situation? 
4x plus 10y is the equation or the number of hours taken for product x is 4 and the number of hours taken for product y is 10, which means that to find out the total number of hours taken, we have to just take 4x plus 10y. So we will substitute x625 and y600 in this equation. So we get 4 into 625 plus 10 into 600, 8,500 hours taken in department B. And how many hours are available in department B? 9,000 hours. We have some hours left in department B. So that is slack. The remaining number of hours is the slack. So what is slack? Slack is the available hours that is 9,000 minus the number of hours taken, 8,500. We get 500 hours as the slack. And in department B, since we have got balance hours, it is known by the name non-binding constraint. It is not very critical. Okay, department B is not very critical. Now, coming to department C. Department C, what is the equation? It is 12x plus 6y. So we take note of it, 12x plus 6y, and we substitute x625 and y600 in this equation. We get 12 into 625 plus 6 into 600, 11,100 hours taken in department C. And how many hours are available in department C? 12,000 hours. So what is the balance hours? Balance hours or slack is 12,000 minus 11,100 or 900 hours. And since we have slack in department C, department C is known by the name non-binding constraint. It is also not very critical. The most critical department is department A because we do not have slack there or we do not have unutilized resource. Now let's get to the definition of binding constraint. Binding constraint. If at the optimal solution, the resources used equals the resource available, the constraint is binding and there is no slack. So in this situation, if at the optimal solution, what was the optimal solution? Optimal solution is point B where X is 625 and Y is 600. The resources used, how much resources have been used? 11,000 hours have been used. And what is the resource available in department A? It is again 11,000 hours. So do we have anything left? No, there is nothing left or there is no slack and it will be a binding constraint. So that is why it is written, the constraint is binding and there is no slack. Now coming to the next definition, what is non-binding constraint? If at the optimal solution, the resource used is less than the resource available, the constraint is non-binding and there is slack. So let's take the example of department B. If at the optimal solution, the resource used, how many resources have been used in department B? 8,500 hours. So resources used in department B is 8,500. And what is the resource available in department B? 9,000 hours. So what is the slack? Slack is 9,000 minus 8,500 or 500 hours. And it is a non-binding constraint. Now, in order to find out whether a particular constraint is a binding or a non-binding constraint, it is not necessary to do any calculation. We can just observe the graph and find out. Let's see how it is done. Now, observe the graph very carefully. Point B is the optimum production point. See where I'm circling? Now, department A has a limiting factor of 11,000 hours. And where is this point B located? Point B is located exactly on the line of department A, which means that 11,000 hours is completely used up. So just by looking at the graph, we understood that department A is a binding constraint because the optimum production point B is located on the line of department A. Now let's take the case of department B, which is the line representing department B. This is the line. And where is it located? It is much above the optimum production point, which means that 9,000 hours is not getting used up at point B. Now let's take the case of department C. Department C, which is the line representing department C, this is the line representing department C. Even that line is much above the optimum production point B, which again indicates that Department C is also a non-binding constraint. So just by looking at the graph, we can understand which is the binding constraint and which is the non-binding constraint. Now let's do a problem and see whether you get the right answer. So the question is, a jewelry company makes rings R and necklaces N. 
the resources available have been analyzed and two constraints are we have got two constraints the two constraints are labor time and machine time labor time the equation is 3r plus 2n less than or equal to 2400 hours what is the meaning of that it simply means that one unit of r takes three labor hours and one unit of n takes two labor hours so total number of hours taken for r and n is 3r plus 2n which should be less than or equal to 2400 hours and what is this 2400 hours that is the total labor hours available so that is the meaning of that linear inequality now coming to the next linear inequality that is machine time 0.5r plus 0.4n less than or equal to 410 hours what is the meaning of that one unit of r takes 0.5 machine hours and one unit of n takes 0.4 machine hours so what is the total number of machine hours taken by r and n it is 0.5r plus 0.4n which should be less than or equal to 410 hours and what is this 410 hours 410 is the maximum number of machine hours that is available now the accountant has used linear programming to determine that r is equal to 500 and n is equal to 400 so this is nothing but the optimum production plan they have already found out the optimum production plan through linear programming which of the following is or are slack resources option a machine time only option b labor time only option c labor and machine time and option d none of the two so we have to find out which is the limiting factor that has slack and how do you find out slack we know that r is equal to 500 and n is equal to 400 is the optimum production plan so all that we have to do is substitute the values of r and n in this equation so let's substitute and see so 3r plus 2n we write it as 3 into 500 because r is 500 plus 2 into 400 because n is 400 which gives the result 2300 hours so 2300 hours is the number of labor hours taken at the optimum production point so how many hours are totally available 2400 hours so we have a balance of 100 hours left so that is nothing but the slack so slack is 2400 minus 2300 or 100 hours now coming to machine time machine time we again substitute r is equal to 500 and n is equal to 400 in this equation so 0 0.5 into 500 plus 0 0.4 into 400 we get 410 machine hours already taken and how many machine hours are available 410 hours only which means that there is no slack not even one machine hour is left so slack is zero so what is the right answer which of the following is or are slack resources the answer is option b labor time only with this we come to an end of today's session i hope you have understood the meaning of slack and how the problems have to be tackled so if you've benefited from the video do hit the subscribe and the like button so thank you for watching and see you in the next video